Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous videos, we have seen about the inbuilt functions of Python, the int type, the decimal form, binary form, octal form, hexadecimal form, and the base conversion. How you are going to convert from one hexadecimal from the binary to hexadecimal, from binary to octal, octal to binary, octal to hexadecimal, and many more contents like that. Let us continue the Python series for beginners. In our today's video, we are going to see about the float data type. We can use this float type to represent the floating point values, or you can also say the decimal values. For example. Here you have yep is equals to here you have yep is equals to 1.234 and if you're going to use a type yep so it is going to display you the content whatever the type is so now what is the type that we have used here the type that we have used here the answer for the type yep will be given as a float we can also use a floating values by using exponential for example you can see f is equal to 1.2 e3 so you, e here represents the exponential value so if you are going to give a print f then it is going to print you the value that is 1200 and instead of this small e you can also use a capital e for your exponential values the main advantage of this exponential form is we can represent any big values in less memory we can represent the integer values in all the forms that is octal decimal and hexadecimal form and also in the binary form but we cannot represent the float values in any of but when it comes to the floating value you cannot give the floating values in octal hexadecimal and binary the only way you can represent your floating point is in a decimal form please keep this in mind now let us see certain examples here like how we can represent it in the visual studio okay the first one a type let us see if f is equals to 1.234 now if i am going to give what is the type of f that we have here so this is the function that we have just you need to give the print as well here print what type is this here save this program and run it again now you can see that it is of the class of float that we have so this is how it is going to display you what type it is so this is how you are going to use the type function next let us see the other function let us see the exponential one yep is equals to 1.2 e3 so this is one kind of thing here so if i just give print f control yes and run the program now you can see that this here it is of the class of float this is for the upper one and the second one that is a print f you have it as 1200 because it says it is an exponential form it is in the exponential form right so this is how you can write or you can give your exponential values in less memory now let us see certain other things now f is equals to now if i am going to represent it in the binary format ob 0b this is the binary format you know it is a literal for binary format 11.01 so this is one kind of representation which i have given for the floating value okay since we have added this yep is equals to ob11.01 so this is the literal that i have added here and when i am going to give a print yep save this function and run it so once when you are going to run it now you can see that it is showing you that it is invalid syntax why is it showing you as an invalid syntax because you cannot represent any binary content in your for a float now let us see if we can represent it with a hexadecimal one yep is equals to 0 yep 123.456 and i'll just give here as print yep i just remove the save it and run it now here also you can see that it is showing you that it is invalid syntax again even if you are going to use any octal number or you can use save it run this file here also you can see it is an invalid syntax it is because you cannot use any octal hexadecimal or binary 
forms in the floating value or you can use as only the decimal variables let's hop on to the next concept that is a complex data type in python you have another data type that is called as a complex data type complex number is of a form a plus b j where j is an image b j will be where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part imaginary part and the j value will always be minus 1 or a root of minus 1. So this is the j value that we have. Where a and b values, a and b contain the integers or the floating point values. For example, it can have 3 plus 5j or you can also have 10 plus 5.5j where a is the real part and j is an imaginary part and here it contains the integer format or it can also have the floating values format or you can also have a 0 0.5 plus 5.8 j so something like this now in the real part if we use int values we can specify that in the real part if we use int values if we can specify that either by the decimal, octal, binary or hexadecimal form. But imaginary part should be specified only by using a decimal form. Let us see this content in Visual Studio. If, if I am giving any complex number, it can easily be give, given as 3 plus 5j. If I just uh, print the value of a, and if I give print type of A, save this program, run this program. Now you can see that the A value is a 3.3 plus a 5J and it is a it is of the type a complex. So you can easily give the complex values like this. If I give in the real part, if I am going to give certain a binary number, certain binary number. And if I run this program, now you can see that the form that I have given is 0, 0B11, where 11 defines 3 again. So you can see 3 plus 5J is the answer. If I'm going to give it in the octal format, in the octal format, save this and run this program, now you can see that it is a 9 plus 5j and the type is complex. In the same way, if I am going to give any of the octal format or binary or hexadecimal or hexadecimal in the imaginary part, then let us see what will be the output. I'll just run this program. I'll save it first and run this program. Now you can see that it is an invalid hexadecimal literal. It is an invalid hexadecimal literal because you cannot add J in that literal. Always you need to give the decimal because whenever this imaginary part comes here with a J, you cannot add it with the binary literal nor you can add it with an octal literal nor you can add it with an hexadecimal literal all you can do is only with the decimal formats so it is easy easier way to understand it you can use only the decimal or integer type i'll just save it i'll run this program here now you can see it is easily running there is a nine plus 3.5 and it is of the type complex. So this is how you can use the complex numbers. Now let us let, just perform a certain operations on this complex type values. So I'll be giving a two values here. That is A is equal to 10 plus 5J, 1.5J, and B is equal to 20 plus 2.5J. So these are the two values that I have given. And I'm going to use C is equal to A plus B. And I'll just give it as a print C. So whenever you're going to use, whenever you're going to perform certain operations on this complex number, what will be the output? And I'll run it. 
Now you can see that the real parts are added and the imaginary parts are added and the value is given for you that is 30.4, 30 plus 4j and wherever you are going to use or wherever you are going to ask it to display the type, it is also going to display you the type that is type C. Save it, run this program. And now you can see this 30 plus 4j and this type of complex. So this is how you can perform certain operations on the complex data types as well. In your complex data type, it has certain inbuilt attributes also. To retrieve only this real part and to retrieve only the imaginary part. To retrieve the real part, all you have is a print c.real. And to retrieve the imaginary part, you have print c dot imac i just save this here and when once you run the program now you can see that the real part is 30.0 because it can also be in the floating point or it can be in the integer point but they should be in the decimal format it is going to give you the output so you have a 30 plus 4 j so like this by using certain so by using this inbuilt attributes you can get the real and the imaginary part of your complex numbers. We can use the complex type generally in a specific applications and electronic engineering applications. Video again in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and keep learning. Bye-bye.